change the new year with a level of optimism. We have to take that positive energy and move it forward. And so one of the things that we always do with this broadcast for the last nine years, and I want people to understand that, you know, really we pay for this show out of our own pocket. Uh, it's not picked up by the municipal dollar at all. I started the show as a Flint City Council person, I continued as a state representative, and now we continue to bring this message to you as the mayor. This is a way that I can communicate with the people broadly to bring about good information. One of the things that is fruitful is good information, and we can plant our feet on good information as we move forward. And so one of the things that we've always done is start out our day and our morning with a prayer. Today we have Pastor Mike Pettigrew. Uh, with us again to give us and establish a prayer and a course for our life and also for this day and also engaging the new year. Pastor Pettigrew, can you be so kind to lead us into prayer? Amen. Happy holiday to you, Mayor Neely, and to the city of Flint. Let us go in prayer. Kind Jesus, thank you for another beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to be able to make it to the end of this year. Ups and downs, good and bad. You told us to always seek you first, and you'll give us the things we need to do. So we want to thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be able to have a mayor who's leading the city. Thank you for his wife. You have placed her in another area, Father, to also give good works to our city. You said two or three touch together and agree, you'll be in the midst. We want to thank you for them. God, you said in Third John 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So, Father, thank you for allowing them, Father, to continue to step out and do the work for the city. We ask you, Father, be with the city, be with all of those who are trying to do your will. Father, I pray, Father, that each and every day we never forget to call upon you. And, Father, we need to always hear your voice. Father, the sick is shut in. Father, all of those that are in need, Father, I pray that you dispatch the right folk that need to be able to take care of them. So we can always be mindful to say thank you. And, Father, as we go into a new year, Father, allow us to seek you in everything we do. And we know that everything will be all right. And we can always hear your voice and serve it. Well done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, we should always engage and start our morning out with prayer and ask God to illuminate our footsteps so we can follow the path uh, to positive engagement with one another. You know, peace is a great path every day. You know, we are... Our, a divided community in many ways, a divided nation in many ways, and a divided world. But definitely we would have so much more uh, peace uh, of mind and heart if we can come together on the things that we can stand together on. And, and so, you know, that's how I try to live my life. And so as we engage this new election season, uh, I've been reelected. You know, I've, I just completed a three-year term. We saw a lot of strife. We saw a lot of uh, disengagement. We saw a lot of divide. I'm trying to bring our community back together, but I can only do so with willing partners. And I'm asking you once again uh, to be able to join us as we continue to move our community forward. As we step out, because the city of Flint, we have changed it. You know, they counted us out in the world and in the country. They counted us out uh, through the pandemic. They counted us out. But now God has saw fit to be able to bless us with a new opportunity to re-engage. We have to start rebranding and writing our own narrative about our community. One of the things we have to do is let the world know that we're not a community of victims, but we are victors. We have so much to offer and we have given so much to this country. We have provided leadership for the world right here from the city of Flint. And so we're going to continue to do so, but we have to work together in order to get that done. And so, you know, I have Vanessa Pringle with us. Uh, she's working in our executive office and also Dr. Lawrence Reynolds. Now, as we engage the last day of 2022, many of us in this faith uh, community, we have more than 280 churches or so in this community, and a lot of people are going to be doing a watch service tonight as they bring in the new year in prayer, which is great. And But we don't know how we started that, that journey. Where did watch services come from, and how did it start? And so today we got the Renaissance man, our, our medical professional, but he's going to educate us about where the watch services came from. So pay attention and let's learn a little bit about watch services. Dr. Reynolds, can you help educate us and let us know uh, how watch services began? Yes, sir. And good morning to you all. And this is from the Schomburg Library in New York City. You know how we've heard our elders talk about watch night service. Uh, and it's been something that we have done. But today I will share with you the origin. 
We were always a praying people. We were always feeling a way to pray without being persecuted or interrupted. But on this date in 1862, the first watch night services were celebrated in black communities in America. In America. It traces back to gatherings known as Freedom Eve. On that night, enslaved black folks came together in churches and private homes all across the nation, awaiting the news that the Emancipation Proclamation had become law. The Emancipation Proclamation freed all enslaved people in the Confederate States, not the loyal slaveholding Union states, but all the Confederate states. But nonetheless, uh, it, he got behind the cotton curtain, and that was the beginning of the end of chattel slavery. Now, other states up north, because there was slavery up north, like in New York State, did gradual emancipation. But by the stroke of the pen, on January 1st, 1863, all enslaved black folks in Confederate states were freed. And this led to uh, in, enslaved folks leaving, joining the Union Army, and, you know, people will say we were given our freedom. That's not correct. There, one, there were 186,000 black soldiers who joined the Union War, the Union Army, by the end of the Civil War in 1865. 38,000 of those black troops lost their lives. So we were not given our freedom. When given the opportunity, we struggled for it and we continue to struggle for it. So when you hear about watch night service, yes, uh, it was the power of God. You know that verse, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You know, people will say, well, Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, but you see, we were a praying people. And as a result of that, it ended, it culminated in the Emancipation Proclamation and launched us on the next phase of our struggle. So thank you, Mayor, for giving me the opportunity to share that. Well, you know, thank you for uh, allowing us the opportunity to learn because, you know, so much of our history is forgotten. So much of our history is laid to the side and, and our young people don't know about that, you know. And I, and I kick it to you, Pastor Pettigrew. You know, we're having watch night service and, and I know, uh, Vanessa, you are also a pastor. But, but did you guys know about the watch night service in 1862? I didn't, Mayor Neely. I did not. Very informative. Dr. Reynolds, but from moving forward, I will know the origination of everything of this watch night church. Right. Yes, I, I, I echo that. I remember as a little girl, you know, my grandmother took me to watch night service uh, with her, um, you know, at a very early age. We worshiped in Mount Sinai Baptist Church uh, out in Beecher area, and my, the church is on one corner of my grandmother's house. Uh, was on the other corner, so all my friends and my uncles used to tease, tease me and my uh, cousins and call us little popes because my grandmother kept us in church so much. Um, but uh, I remember going there, and, you know, as little kids, we were excited to stay up late and go to the Fellowship Hall and eat donuts. That's what we knew about watch night. <laughs> but this information was definitely enlightening, and as I share with my children and my grandchildren, I would definitely share this, um, the rich history that goes behind it. Thank you so much, Dr. Reynolds. Yeah, and it just goes... And thank you very much. Mayor, may I say? Yes. And if you don't believe me, look it up yourself. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you know, it goes to show that we follow tradition in, in, in this country and in our culture. We follow tradition, but we just don't know why we follow in the tradition and what the tradition really stands for. And, you know, as we engage a new year, a new era, we have to really continue to pray for our emancipation. You know, whether we be emancipated from hate, greed, um, jealousy, envy, we need to be emancipated. We need to keep lifting our minds and our hearts toward prayer, toward our, our Father, uh, which are in heaven, uh, to continue to emancipate our thinking and to bring us together along those lines. And so, and we continue to fight, and we have to put a level of effort toward that as those black soldiers did in the Civil War in the effort to be able to make sure that we had a freed country. 
you know, under this uh, uh, American Constitution, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment of the Constitution uh, really speaks to that and how we're emancipated as a people here in this country. And if you want a copy of the Constitution, I'm sure State Representative Cynthia Neely will be more than happy to share a Constitution with you for your own keeping, uh, making sure that we can uh, educate ourselves and our families. But we have a lot of great news on tap. You know, once before, you know, the city of Flint <clears throat> was ranked amongst the most violent cities in our country. The most violent cities in our country. And as we've been migrating through this new technology and this new uh, initiatives and the way we've been planning to push back crime in our community under the leadership of Police Chief Terrence Green, we engage some very non-traditional ways to be able to push back crime. The new reports came out this uh, past week, Vanessa, and it's so happy to report. They reported the top 10 most violent cities in Michigan, just the top 10 in Michigan alone. The city of Flint was not amongst them. I repeat that. The city of Flint was not amongst the new reporting of the most violent cities in Michigan. We're not in the top 10. Uh, other communities throughout the city, the well, state of Michigan, have been made that, that mark. One thing with, that was to my surprise, uh, Vanessa, was that Flint Township was number four now, right? You know, and we we know that that it was measurements and, and execution to try to change the name of Flint Township uh, to something different beyond the name Flint being associated with the township. You know, and it's it's kind of ironic how it works out that they've been rated number four with violence uh, in the state of Michigan. Flint is not even in the top ten, but they were trying to. Uh, uh, escape the name Flint. What do you think about that? Um, I think it's very interesting, uh, Mayor. I think it, again, goes to uh, being unified uh, and uh, leading, having a man of God in place as a leader um, who will trust God and pray to God for this city and to involve other people to pray for this city and put strong leadership in place. And that makes a difference, you know, not people's opinions, not, you know, it's, you know, really committing ourselves to God. As you were talking about traditions and things that we do uh, in our city and the things that we do and say and, and the way that we react, uh, the Word of God tells us that we, we uh, hold on tra to traditions, but we let the Word of God go. Um, I think that, that's Mark 7 and 8. Um, but instead of, you know, traditionally saying, traditionally doing something, you have consistently been a man of prayer. You've consistently uh, been a man who will submit to prayer, and you allow men and women of God to, you know, pray for the city and, you know, to uplift our city through prayer. And I, I believe that that's the turnaround that we're seeing and that we will continue to see, not that we're holding on to, you know, man's uh opinion, but trusting God's word. And I think that's we're going to continue to see our city uh, become a, a destination point in the state of Michigan. Uh, and people around the world are going to talk about how we have turned the city around because we trust God. Right. You know, rebranding of our city, rewriting our narrative, we have to really work in the minds and the hearts of our young people. We have to really uh, show an effort to lead our young people and to educate our young people. <clears throat> From this administrative office, I'll be reaching out to the Flint New School Board members. Uh, it was five newly elected, also the superintendent, uh, Superintendent Cavalin Jones, to be able to work more in harmony with our school district. People have to understand that you mm -hmm. have separate units of government under the Home Rule Act in the state of Michigan. The school district itself has its own level and its own unit of government because they have a school board that's elected. They run the day-to-day -day operations, how we're going to be educating our young people inside the city. But definitely I will be building the bridge stronger and better to make sure that this administrative office can be, be able to be of support to educating our young people in the state of Michigan uh, right here in the city of Flint. But definitely we want to make sure that we build a bridge to be able to communicate a level of effort on how we educate our young people. One of the things, and Pastor Pettigrew also works in the element of education uh, with, with young people, but 40% of the school age children that resides inside the city of Flint are going to school in the out county area, whether it be Kersley, Swartz Creek, Davidson, Grand Blank, or Westwood Heights. Uh, many kids are being transported outside the borders of the city of Flint, though they live here, to be educated uh, in the out county area. That represents a, a level of loss of revenue. Uh, I think the per pupil uh, ratio now is $8,200 per student. That means when those kids leave the city of Flint to go be educated somewhere else outside of the city of Flint, 
we lose that level of revenue to support the educational system inside the city of Flint. But it really speaks to the lack of confidence that the residents have or parents have in our public school system. We have to rebuild that. We have to show a, a great effort to educate our young people. We don't want to forfeit the only opportunity that we have with the greatest love that we have, and that's our children. That is true innocence, and that is where our, our investments should go, educating our young people. And I'll be showing a great effort from the city administration to be able to help partner that because it shows a gross lack in critical thinking if we cannot partner with our partners in education and making sure the educational partners are doing the very best job for our young people and to attract those families and to restore a level of confidence. But not only here locally, we have to do that. Those are self-inflicted wounds that we have to start moving to heal, but definitely how the world looks at the city of Flint. We have University of Michigan. We have Kettering University. We have Mott Community College. You know, how can we attract uh, young people to come to be educated at University of Michigan Flint or Kettering University when people look at this community as a deficient community or crime-riddled community? We can't let that misnomer continue. We are putting out good work and good facts. We're no longer on, on the doorstep of being insolvent. We have received a quarter billion dollars from our state delegation and our governor to be able to right-size our pension system here in the city of Flint. That took a lot of work and effort. We have been working very hard to make sure we do that. And the retirees in the city of Flint are now uh, you know, secure in making sure they're going to get their retirement moving forward. But we continue to still work toward that effort. We no longer have to look over our shoulders for emergency managers to come in to de uh, deconstruct our community because we've been working together. But definitely, for those of you that still have hostility in your heart, please pray that away because we have to work together. We won this election. The election is over now. So all those things that w w kept us divided over uh, a period of time, let's come back together and let's heal. Let's work with our city council. Let's do those things. But definitely we have to make sure that our physical health is being taken care of. Though that we're engaging in, in, in watch night services tonight and also uh, parties and gatherings, we must observe healthy uh, lifestyles, making sure we take care of ourselves. Dr. Reynolds, how can we uh, make sure through our engagements uh, through this night as we celebrate the new year coming in, how can we make sure that we're protected and taking care of ourselves? Uh, well, number one, don't drink and drive. So if you have a guest who comes and he, he or she is already intoxicated, uh, cut them off arrange a ride for a driver to take them home so that we can protect our loved ones. The other thing is, if you have firearms in the house, see, here we go, because people like to shoot off their, their, uh, their, their weapons at midnight, please reconsider, because what goes up must come down. So you think you're just shooting a bullet up in the air and it's going to disappear? No, it can come down through somebody's window, through somebody's roof, and it can hurt somebody or do damage. So desist from shooting off firearms. Have your weapons locked, unloaded, and have them in a cabinet that's locked, and have your ammunition someplace else. Uh, this is how we protect our people. If, if you have any candles or anything going, please put them out. Uh, before you leave the room, if you have space heaters going, uh, if you're leaving the area, turn them off. And please, guard your tongue. Watch your mouth. Watch what you say. Uh, because not everybody has put aside uh, those hurts and harms and insults that they perceive they receive during the year. And you don't want to say something that will trigger a, a, a vengeful response. So Amen. Come and back away. Right. And also, you know, as we look at the landscape of the state of Michigan, that recreational marijuana is legal now. When we talk about don't drink and drive and to be under the influence, don't be under the influence of any particular narcotic or anything, whether it's legal or not. We know that drinking is legal as long as you're not drunk, but also under don't drive if you're under the influence of any other type of narcotic. Uh, please, because the life that you lose may not just be your own, but you can put other people in harm's way. Uh, if you choose to not observe our ordinance and the laws about discharging firearms inside the city of Flint, understand this. This administration does not bluff. If you're caught 
discharging a firearm, which is illegal inside the city limits. And if you possess that firearm illegally, you will be charged. Your firearm will be confiscated and it will be destroyed. And then you will face adjudication for that crime. Now, that's not something we want to do. But in order for us not to engage that, please do not violate the law as it relates to uh, discharging a firearm. You know, common sense will tell you, as Dr. Reynolds said, what goes up must come down and it can harm someone. Just be aware that as we celebrate this this uh, this, this, this season of, of, of a new uh, year coming in, how about we do this? Send a prayer up. Fire multiple prayers uh, at the hour of, of, of midnight, you know, praying that prayer goes up and it comes down as a blessing versus uh, yeah. a discharging a firearm uh, up into the air. You know, you know, and, and the sister D is one of my, you know, favorite, one of my favorite people in the world. And, and, and I'm dressing up tonight because we have the unity gala tonight over at the Sloan museum. Uh, we have limited tickets, but if you still want to RSVP, please go to my Facebook page and take a look and see if we have any more availability, but we'll be bringing in the new year that way. But, but definitely we'll be practicing uh, safe distancing and, and wearing some of a mask uh, at this uh, celebration tonight. But, but definitely, you know, as I dress up tonight, I always think about uh, Mr. Richardson, uh, uh, Sister uh, Dolores' husband. He is one of the most fashionable guys inside the city of Flint. And one day I keep threatening to buy a suit from him, but I just got to be able to uh, save up my pennies to be able to buy that suit. Sister D, is, uh, is there any old suits laying around the house that I could probably get... Uh, from uh, uh, Brother Richardson today? <laughs> They're all custom made, and uh, I'll make sure in the new year that he, he hooked you up, man. Oh, my goodness. And so all custom made, and he does a fantastic job. Instead of me going to K&G and getting a BOGO, buy one, get one free, uh, I'm going to have to one day uh, spend a couple pennies uh, to get a, get one of those custom made suits, and so so I could be fashionable as as Mr. Richardson and also Dr. Reynolds. And uh, Dr. Reynolds, uh, are you get, are, are you getting those custom made suits, or can we go half on a bog uh, a bogo? Buy one, get one half off. <laughs> Let's say my goal is to move up to Mr. Richardson's uh, clientele one day. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can we can connect both of you to the James Douglas Connect collection. All right. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about. Right. And if, if you ever seen him dressed, you understand what I'm talking about. Pastor Pettigrew, do you have one of those suits yet? I don't have one of those suits, but I've been watching him as he uh, down in the city. I look at him and I have to make sure I keep my eyes on the road because he's sharp dressed. <laughs> that, 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 that's exactly don't it. Get a bag. Don't get a bag. Uh, look, check out his Instagram page, James Douglas Collection. Check him out. James Douglas Collection, we want to make sure that we buy suits and we like to dress. As a, as a part of our culture, we like to dress up. And so sometimes, you know, we have to spoil ourselves a little bit and dress up. So so we want to go to that. Give us that, that, that connection again, Sister D. James Douglas Collection at uh, Instagram.com. That's it. I'm going to go there. Also on Facebook and Twitter. Is there any coupons? You don't need anything. Right. <laughs> well, you know, as I sport my bedrock shirt, you know, I, I wear this bedrock shirt. These are fashionable uh, shirts right here from uh, Jason Trace, uh, a local business person here inside the city of Flint. But we have to de definitely, in our local economy, we have to support small businesses, and we have been doing so. You know, we have put $971,000 of small business development dollars from my tenure here just this past year in the economic development growth for small businesses. And so we've been doing that here in the city of Flint, and we talked about it in our State of the City address. If you have, didn't catch my State of the City address, which I delivered uh, a week and a half ago, please go to Spectacle Productions or YouTube uh, or the City of Flint page to be able to look at that 40-minute uh, State of the City address to really understand where we are and all the progress that we've made. we made marvelous progress, you know, and so... We, we did it. We were fueled by love. We were fueled by the, the level of opportunity for our young people. We were fueled by the things that makes us uh, a better community. And so we've been able to do those things. And so, you know, as we talk about economic development and growth, we have to do so. You know, and Sister D, you know, um, I went to Somerset Mall with the, with the, uh, the First Lady, State Representative Cynthia Neely, and we went to one of those uh, very, very exclusive uh, high-priced stores. 
and and she was pretty much embarrassed. I asked, did they have any coupons or discounts? She said, don't you ever embarrass me again by doing that. So she have <laughs> uh, I, I've been uh, hopefully I get out of a shopping uh, uh, punishment. I can go shopping with her again in 2023, but I've been put on punishment that I could not go shopping because I asked for the sales rack or the discount. But, but you know, you know, people around the office call yeah. me cheap. I just say I'm a budget specialist, uh, and that really helps uh, us. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and Vanessa, can you speak to that? Am I cheap or am I a budget specialist? Um, I'm going to have to say a little bit of both, Mayor. <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> and, and, and the thing about it is that is that we've been able here uh, out of my three years, my three year tenure, we passed three consecutive balanced budgets for the city of Flint. Operating and being fiscally responsible is our duty to you, uh, the residents of this great community. Making sure your dollars go to the purpose of serving you and only you, and we've been able to do that. So when I talk about my personal finance or the municipal finance, I look at it uh, every day with a value. And we make sure those values are, are turn, returned to the residents of the city of Flint. As we move to our American Rescue Plan dollars, you know, 32% of those have already been obligated for improvements for you, the residents. We're going to be moving forward, and in, in the first week of the new year or so, we'll be releasing the applications for those things. Now, let me tell you this. It won't go to friends, families, a level of nepotism or friendships or cutting any special deals. So those individuals that may be upset, uh, because of that, you know, don't don't be upset because I'm telling you now. And so that we're going to be using these dollars for the improvement and the empowerment of residents inside this great community. So when you apply and do an application for these dollars, know that they have to have a certain level of value in the way that we're going to be looking at them and making sure that these dollars are used uh, for the empowerment and improvement of our community. One-time dollars. Uh, we'll be able to track these dollars from its inception to its expiration. Uh, it won't be a level of, uh, of misuse of dollars. We've seen enough of that here in the city of Flint, and that won't happen uh, ever again under this watch. And so, Mayor, you know, Mayor, yes, go ahead, Pastor Pettigrew. I, I want to say this in a matter of 35, 40 seconds, is that in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah had a big concern, and many of you scholars out there know this, many of you pastors know this, and the officials even know this. Nehemiah had a big concern for the city. He saw the ruins of the city. He saw crooked things going on. But Nehemiah, by the, with the help of the Lord, he went out to assess what needed to be done. And Nehemiah consulted with the Lord. And we talk about, you know, uh, put God first in everything. And after Nehemiah went back to the Lord and assessed everything, God allowed Nehemiah to be connected with those that were in the Lansing, I think, or the, for lack of better words, diff, different people who came to assist, because uh, Nehemiah was trusted that he was going to give everything back to the Lord. And I pray that as the Lord continue to enhance you each and every day, that you'll consult with the Lord, and God will give you those people that you need to build the city. And you have to realize Nehemiah, Nehemiah was able to build that city in a fast time because he kept God first. God do not tarry when we try to do this work. And so I want to thank you for who you are and represent us for who she is. And we pray that you all continue to lead God, lead the way that the Lord wants you to lead. Yep. As we close out this last broadcast of 2022, I want to wish you and your families the very, very best. Please keep everything uh, in order. You know, we are now uh, on the anniversaries of a personal loss, my mother and my mother-in-law around this time last year. And I want to thank all of you for your prayers throughout this year to keep us lifted, but let's keep each other lifted in prayer. I always end up my broadcast by saying, I love you, mom. But today I'm going to say, I love you, mom. I love you, city of Flint. I love my family and love each other just a little bit more. Happy, happy, happy uh, 2023 as we engage a new year uh, that we've never seen before. So let's go out and let's do something good today. Be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister D. Thank you, uh, uh, Pastor Pettigrew. And Happy thank New you, Year. guys. Happy New Year's. God bless. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Reynolds. God bless. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you all. Right. Thank you, Facebook family, for taking a look at it. Go check out the State of the City address so you can have a better understanding about what we've been doing over the course of this past year and all the great works. Go out and do something great today. Let's be encouragers. Let's be uh, truth uh, bearers. And let's continue to 
lift God's, uh, you know, word every single day. God bless all of you guys. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Peace.